Good morning. I am so glad that you are joining me because we are going to be answering the question, does delivery really matter? I want to hear your thoughts and experiences in the comments. Maybe you captured the FedEx guy or your Amazon package being delivered at your front door and you were amazed how they delivered the package. I can only imagine some of the stories we're going to discover today. So without any further ado, let's see what's inside today's package. I've always been the type of person that likes to unwrap gifts instead of pulling tissue paper out of a bag. I'm not sure if it's the suspense leading up to getting into the actual gift or just the pretty aesthetics of the wrapping. Either way, I have received a lot of boxes in the mail and some of them were packed amazing. They were so pretty. While others looked like a giant grizzly bear, got hungry and beat just the crap out of this box. Thankfully, everything on the inside was perfectly fine, nothing was damaged, but it definitely made me wonder what was gonna be on the inside. I have a lot of respect for those of you who can wrap a present and make it look perfect, which is kind of what made me want to discuss this topic today. Yesterday, I was daydreaming and I was thinking about a song that I recently wrote. I want to have the song recorded, so <clears throat> I started thinking of a few different ladies that I thought would sing this song so good. Well, in this vision of mine, this powerhouse singer was going to perform it live um, during one of her concerts. But before she goes out, she turns around and she looks at me and she says, I think you should sing the song. I was like, what? No, I picked you because you will deliver it with such power and it will move people. She said, it's not about the delivery and how loud or soft the song is saying. It's about the lyrics and the meaning of what you're saying. My reply was, well, you'll sound much better singing it. Then I heard in my spirit, it's what's on the inside that people remember, not the package it's delivered in. I thought, what? Then I heard, no one keeps the box. See, we can get so fixed on the outside and want everything to look good and sound perfect. But at the end of the day, a package is just a box. The value comes from what you discover on the inside after all that pretty wrapping has been removed. Sometimes we try our hardest to keep the box with all the wrapping on it so no one sees the mess on the inside. Now I'm not saying go live on social media and broadcast everything to the world, but I want to encourage you to start reading a verse a day to discover the beauty on the inside of yourself. God created you unique and special. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Genesis 1.27 says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him, male and female he created them. Every morning when you are getting ready, it's okay to remind yourself who you were created to be. Sometimes we find it easier to look in the mirror and say, oh my gosh, this hair is crazy, or I definitely need to put some makeup on today. But did you know that you can change your mindset and start seeing yourself the way God sees you? And then you'll start saying, 
I'm a reflection of God. My light shines bright to bring glory to Him. Reading God's Word will amplify who you are. It begins to show you insight to the deepest depths of what you were created for. In Philippians 4, 6-7, through 7, it says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your minds through Christ Jesus. That verse is such a great reminder for us to not worry about everything that life tries to throw at you, but to have that grateful heart, one that's thankful. So when you're going to God and you're making your requests known, you're not shy or timid. You're bold going in with confidence saying, Father, I want to bring this to your attention. I need some help, some guidance in this area. Maybe you don't see yourself that way. Maybe there's some things going on that you're like, I have no idea how we're going to get out of this situation. And so you're bringing that to God boldly, not out of, well, he's busy, he can't help me, there's other things that are more important, you know, that he's got to answer. No, he values you, he loves you, he wants us to have fellowship with him. So when we're bringing those requests to him, he's listening to what we're saying. And then I love when verse 7, like we just read, where it's talking about the peace of God which surpasses all your understanding. So your intellect can only comprehend so much. That's why a lot of times when you're reading the Bible, you may be overwhelmed and think, oh my gosh, I don't know what this is saying. Because our intellect gets to that point to where we try and analyze everything, and supernatural things cannot be understood in a natural tense. Now, we can learn in the Bible that he'll use natural things to try and explain spiritual things, but it takes us going into it with, Lord, you're going to have to reveal this to me. And then he starts showing you. It's almost like he's taking off that wrapping, and he begins to show you different layers, different pieces to a verse. And then it's like that light bulb moment, and you're like, oh my gosh, I understand. I get it. And then there's that peace because now we have that guard over our hearts and over our mind. And so we're not just letting anything and everything come in and influence us. We're only letting the right things on the inside. So we're speaking out God's word instead of negativity, instead of failures. Which is why we can also read in Colossians 3, 2, it says, Set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. It's important that we're constantly renewing our mind and making sure that we are setting our mind on things above, on what the Word of God says and not on what a person says, your boss says, what the world says, what a magazine, a TV, whatever it is that you um, consider of value. Don't let those things have more priority than what God's Word says about you. Joshua 1 8 tells us, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night. It's important that we remember it's not just a one time deal and then you don't ever have to do it again. It is a constant thing that we have to renew our mind, that we have to stay in the Word of God. First thing in the morning, last thing at night. You start your day with him, you end your day with him. A lot can happen in between. So if you just start your day, that's good because you're going to be productive. But all those little things in the middle that happen in life, and then when it's time to go to bed, now what happens? Your brain is trying to process everything that just took place. So you want to start and end your day in the Word of God. Did you guys know that God is always looking on the inside? 1 Samuel 16, 7 tells us, For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. God loves you, and he wants to show you how valuable you really are. Don't disqualify yourself by comparing yourself to everyone else. You can do all things through Christ 
who strengthens you. Let's reevaluate what's on the inside. And remember, it's not all about the delivery of the package. I hope this session has inspired you today. And if it has, don't forget to click the subscribe button to stay motivated. I love you guys, and I'll see you next week. <music>